Hello and welcome to Talking Business with me, Danny Pardo. On this episode, I'm talking with Kimani and we are going to get stuck into his career journey right from his GCSEs all the way up to where he is now a position to mentor and help graduates and new employees within his business that he works in as well. So let's get stuck into his career, his passion for law and banking, and let's talk business with Kimani. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talking Business with Danny Pardo. We've got Kamani here today. Hello, Kamani. How are you doing? All good, Danny. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you very much. Very well. So firstly, thank you very much for chatting to me. Appreciate it. We've made a connection through Paul, who was on here before. I'm yeah. sure he'll come into the conversation and we might have more of your circle of friends in future episodes as well. Um, but before we get to all of them, you know, let's focus on you. Uh, so who, who are we speaking to today? Who is Kimani? Yep. Um, so, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Kimani. Um currently working at Barclays at the, um, in the investment bank in Canary Wharf, London. Um, originally from North London, an area called Enfield. Um, in terms of how I sort of got into Barclays, I guess we'll, we'll touch on that a bit more. But, you know, I uh, very much done the, uh, you know, the structured route of uh, GCSEs, A-levels, university. And was quite good at networking and, you know, managed to get myself into the, um, into the corporate world. Mm. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got a bit of a journey here, but we're going to pick apart a little bit and then get stuck into what you're doing right now as well, and then what's coming next. So let's go way back to then to say 16 year old Kamani. You're finishing up your GCSEs. You said you've taken that structured route. Was that always the plan? Did you know this is what I'm going to be doing in 10 years' time? Were you, did you have that kind of mindset? Yeah, so being completely transparent, I think uh, going through school, I think things clicked for me once I got into year 10. I don't know what it was. Um, I remember back in, I think it was 2012, there was that rumour about the world was going to end. <laughs> so things just sort of clicked. It was a movie and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things just clicked that year. Um, and I guess my friends even said, you know, going into school, my mindset was just different. Um, I was very, a, a lot more thorough in my exams. I took revision a lot seriously. Um, the way I revised, it changed. Um, and I was just open to, you know, meeting a lot of different people in, in the school. Um, you know, usually you just stick to your main group of friends. Um, through that, I managed to work up the sets. And I guess where it all started was um, we had a careers uh, office. And in year 10, you had to do like a week's work experience. Um, and there was a poster saying um, anyone interested in pursuing A-levels, there is a, uh, a scheme, a work experience program for those that are from... Um, you know, underprivileged back, back, backgrounds, um, looking to stay on at sixth form. Um, so that's where I applied and got on my work experience and stuff. And that's why I met people like Paul and stuff. And that's where my eyes got open to, you know, the real world. And I saw, you know, lawyers, bankers, engineers, doctors, etc. And from there, that's where I knew, you know, to take education seriously and what I actually wanted to do in life. So the importance of work experience, just one poster, literally yeah, changed yeah. the direction of, of your life. I mean, that, that's amazing. Yeah. Here, you know, and obviously you had a supportive team there to be able to do it. So you left school then, and so that helped you. Did that help you choose your GCSEs then? So did your work experience make you think, this is something I do, don't want to do, and then you move on and go, all right, so now I need to do these A-levels. Was that the kind of process that we're at there? Yeah, so I saw that poster when I was in year 10, um, still had to get work experience for that year. Um, at the top of my road, there was like a local solicitors. Um, they done a lot of property law um, and stuff to do with taxes. So if you had a limited company. Um, so I went there for a the week. That was good. Um, then I had to apply for the program. And if you were successful, you got it at the end of year 11, going into year 12. So there was still a year. So within that year, it was very much about getting the, the right GCSEs um, to get my A-level courses. Um, I managed to get uh, five A star to C's. Um, no, sorry, it was eleven A star to C grades. Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, sorry, it was eleven A star to C grades, and I'd done really good at science. And my mum's a nurse, so at the time there was a sort of I wouldn't say pressure, but it was a bit of a thing of you know following your parents' footsteps. Um, so I said, you know, I wanted to be a doctor. But once I had that experience in the legal field, um, and I saw in this program, I applied to the legal, uh, you know strands um then i just uh from there i changed all my subjects to essay based subjects i took the risk even though i got really good grades in um the science subjects and yeah from there i changed to english literature history and psychology um i also got 
um, really good grades on those. Um, and I just took that, you know, essay based reading and writing route. And yeah, that's why I went into to the legal field. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. So again, what type of people and, and as a complete disclaimer to everybody else watching and listening to this, we have had a few questions that we said we'd talk about. I don't know the answers. This wasn't on the list, but I'm kind of curious now you're saying that you had real big aspirations then when you were 16, 17, yep. 18. Were you surrounded by people with similar similar aspirations or were they thinking, oh, you're never going to do that. Come on, don't even bother. Um, you know, what, what kind of people were you surrounding yourself with? Were you consciously aware that you were surrounding yourself with? people who are thinking a certain way because a lot of the time teenagers are told be careful who you mix with and do this and do that is that yeah. coming into your head at all at that point uh yeah so i say my both my parents were really big on education but at the same time um being from a caribbean background so both my parents are of jamaican descent um but being from a caribbean background the emphasis is very much on on doing a trade so you know being good with your hands painter and decorator, uh, driver, things like that. Um, and I guess, yeah, I didn't really have that, you know, sort of push to, you know, go into the corporate world or anything. And around me, it was very much, you know, uh, things like football um, or sports entertainment. Um, but having exposure to sort of, you know, the legal field and those bits of work experience, it really showed me that life's a lot bigger than the sort of bubble what you grew up in. Um, and what my school did do, sorry, a bit I missed out, is um, once we got to the uh, year 11 stage, you know, going on to uh, do your GCSE, the final ones, um, they actually separated and they created form groups. So they had like a high flyers form group and everyone that sort of hit a certain benchmark was in this set. And I was in that set, but I was at the bottom end of the set to start with. Um, you know, I ended up in the top end, but um, at the end, but a lot of those people in that set were from sort of the nice bit of the, the area. And so it really sort of started to sort of mold my mind and think about, you know, what's actually cool in the real world? Um, what are some of the different jobs you can do? What are some of the things these people do on the weekend? So that's where things sort of started to shift. I got gotcha. you. So let's jump to university then. So you've done GCC, you've done your A-levels. Um, did I hear you right that you didn't study law at A-level? Is that is that right? You did the English history? Before? Yeah, so... So when I was in A-level, I think it just got introduced as an A-level subject you could do, um, but I didn't do it. So I'd done English literature, history and psychology. So as I, as I was saying before, um, I got really good grades in GCSEs for sciences, but um, I guess my passion was reading and writing. So I loved essay-based subjects. Um, and once I took the risk, you know, not go down sort of uh, the medical route, which my mum does and sort of, you know, uh, have a mind for my own, let's say. Um, yeah, I really just jumped into that. I used to hate reading growing up and then attended something I loved. I loved history. Um, I was actually one of the few people that got an A-star in my uh, school's uh, A-level results. I was on BBC News and everything. So, oh, yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So you go to university then, um, and, and that as an experience for you, did you do a placement year during that? Did you do the bog standard three-year degree? Um, how did that kind of change and shape you and yeah. convince you, I suppose, that, yes, this is the right career for me? Yep. Okay, so it was a three-year, I've done a three-year law course um, called LLB Law at the University of Nottingham. Um, the University of Nottingham, they wanted me to get ASIAA. That was their sort of entry requirements. I managed to hit it. It was a struggle. Um, so I'm originally from London. So that was a big jump moving from London to Nottingham. Um, and, you know, a lot of my friends, such as Paul, for example, they all went to Southampton. Right. So I guess I've met a lot of my closest friends through him, but I was sort of the only one, you know, from North London um, that went up to, North, to, um, to Nottingham. So that was really, at times it was a bit lonely mm. in the first year. And on top of that, it was a really hard course. And you sort of go from being the best in your sort of school, A-levels, to then going to university. And um, people that went to maybe grammar schools and private schools, they just get it quickly. Yeah. I don't know if it's maybe they're taught how to write differently or what, but, you know, they just pick it up really quick, quickly. So. And you yeah. made that move on your own as well. So there was nobody else going up with you or anything. You didn't have, say, a circle of you like, oh, we're all going to get halls together or anything like that. It was like, no, this is what I want to do, where I want to go. And I... Going. Yeah, so being completely honest, there there wasn't a lot of people from my secondary school. I stayed on at the sixth form, so there wasn't a lot of people at my school that went on to Russell Group Universities. Oh, 
Um, a lot of people went to the local universities, not that there's anything wrong with it, you know, um, but there was very few people that went on to, you know, those bigger institutions. Um, I had one other person, he done uh, cyber, no, he done pharmacy, but still it was, you know, just me and the law course. Right, okay. So we go for a university then. Um, do you get any work experience or anything while you're at university? Or was it a case of once you leave, then you're off yep. into a world of work? Yep. So the programme I joined in uh, year 11 going into year 12. So that really started to kick off. Um, before I got to university, I had a ton of work experience, um, whether that be insight days at top law firms. So, you know, think of the big skyscrapers in London, Canary Wharf. Um, went to those places, um, went in for work workshops, so, you know, CV workshops, um, UCAS applications. Sometimes they'd offer a week work experience in the legal department, whether that be in-house or private practice. So when I was making my actual UCAS application, I had a ton of legal work experience um, to sort of draw upon to make the application. Um, and in the sort of first, second year of university, as you probably know, um, there's these things called spring weeks. So in the banking field, um, which I work in now, which we'll touch on later, um, in the banking field, it's typical for students in their first year of university to do a spring week. And that's essentially a four week placement, four to six weeks at a bank, whether that be in the investment banking department, risk and compliance in the second line, audit in the third line, wherever it be. Um, in the legal fields, it's more of a condensed uh, two week placement. So they do offer spring weeks in the first year, but it's typical in the legal field that you'll do a second year placement for two weeks called a VAC scheme. And if you're successful, they sort of give you an offer of, you know, once you're graduated, we'll pay for your solicitor qualifications and you'll work for us in return on completion. Okay, so you finish university and how do we bridge the gap between when you finish university and where you are now? How many years difference are we talking, if you don't mind me asking, because I might give away your age, so feel free to make <laughs> Yeah. But how do you get from, okay, I've graduated, did cup and gain, all those kind of fun things, and now I'm here. What, what's the bit in the middle where we're actually earning a living and, you know, following your career passion? Yeah, so I guess a trend is that it all starts before I get to the point. So, you know, done year 11, done year 12, got all this work experience, gone to uni, first year at university, I didn't get any work experience. I think I applied to all the uh, programs and stuff, whether that be law and banking, and I was unsuccessful. Second year, um, I was a bit disheartened from not getting anything in the first year. I saw a lot of people getting uh, vacation schemes or spring weeks at banks, and they're now getting offers, you know, when you um, finish your course, come and work for us and we'll give you a good joining bonus and all this stuff. And I, I didn't get that. Towards the middle of the second year of university, there was another program called Pathways to Law, which I'm still an alumni of now. And it was essentially a, a program to help university leavers get a job. So the first one was more about introducing you to the corporate world as someone that's in year 11 going into year 12. This one was now focused on how do we uh, work on the soft skills when it comes to applying to a full-time job? So through that, I, I stood out on the programme. Um, I got experience in-house in the Barclays Legal Department. Um, so yeah, done something called the Barclays Legal Week. Um, and through there, things has changed. Um, I went to a networking dinner. I met someone very senior. I won't disclose his name. Um, but yeah, I met someone very senior, told him, you know, I'm on the Legal Week. Um, through there, we just had a lot of conversations, went for a few coffees, went to eat and stuff. And just through, you know, talking to him, osmosis, um, I really picked up a lot about the banking world mm. and maybe a potential avenue I wanted to sort of do, a new challenge. Um, so, yeah, I just made the final application um, direct to Barclays on the um, sort of graduate website, um, applied to the compliance graduate scheme as opposed to legal and, yeah, managed to get a role at Barclays. Brilliant. Now, you said a key word there, and that's networking, which I want to kind of pick up on. So that's essentially a big part of my current day job, um, but also for you uh, and the importance of it. And I think that when people hear the word networking, there's the presumption, uh, admittedly I did as well, but as long as you've got a nice LinkedIn and a nice Twitter, you're all sorted and you'll have a job for life. Um, but you've already said that you had to go and speak to people and have the confidence. I mean, how do you have the confidence to just go up to people and do that? And, and how important is it that you... That you do it in the right way as somebody who's literally yeah. been there and done it 
Yeah. Um, you know, believe it or not, I'd say I'm quite a shy person. My friends would probably watch this and laugh. But um, yeah, I think I'm actually a shy person. But I think where the skill came from was when I got all these, you know, work experience programs, there was a lot of people my age from different walks of life, uh, whether that be different cultures, different areas of London or outside London, um, all applying to different programs and all sort of put into one room and, you know, going on these workshops, these work experience programs, etc. So through that, you just, you know, you have to be social. And I say going to a university away from home as well, that forced me to be social. Um, because I guess if I was still in North London, I went to the local university in, let's say, Hertfordshire, it's, it's too close. You know, a lot of people I went to school with would probably be at that university. Um, the people think the same, et cetera. So I think just putting myself in uncomfortable situations um, and yeah, just, you know, I think a big part of networking is it's not about getting something out of the other person, um, but I think it's about sort of a mutual sort of respect and getting to understand them and also showing uh, your personality. And I think through that, you know, a lot of people are similar. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, re- that's fascinating to hear. I mean, what would you say now to people then if if you could kind of, uh, if, if you knew there were people on work experience pros and they're like, yeah, I'm shy, I don't do that. I'll go to the event, I'll go to the dinner, whatever, but I am not yeah, going yeah. up there and speaking to people. I don't care what job it leads yeah. to. No way. What, what would you say? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was laughing because I used to have that exact same mindset. Oh, right. But, okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this, this question is not scripted. Yeah. For people watching and listening going, hey, they're acting me so well. It's like, no, no, I've just literally thrown that at you, haven't I, come on. So, yeah, so, I used to have that exact same mindset. Who think that then? Yeah, um... Something I say to my interns and grads all the time, um, people I mentor, I always say this, the aim of the game is to be social. So, you know, it's very important to get good grades, definitely, um, and be good at your day job. Be someone that your, you know, your manager can trust, be a resource, add value to your team, but at the same time, um, realise that there's always opportunities to learn. And those opportunities may not always be at the desk. So, you know, uh, very very recently, about two weeks ago, my directors um, invited me out for drinks. And it was after work, it was raining and stuff, but I'm glad I went because I picked up a lot of experience in terms of things they've learned, things they do differently, some advice for someone my age. Uh, so yeah, it, it was very, very beneficial. So always put yourself out there. Yeah, I like that because again, you don't know who you're going to meet in what situation and what the conversation is going to turn to. And like, like you said, it's raining, it's cold, Friday evening, you're like, I just want to go home, like, <laughs> you know, but but you never know what you get out of those. And also it can be very enjoyable experiences and, and uh, you know, confidence building and things like that. So it is good to throw yourself yeah. out there into those situations. And it's great yeah. to hear you've done that. And it's, it's been useful for you and your organisation as well. So so what, what on earth do you actually do as your day job then? So what, what's your job title and what, what do you do now after all of that? Um, what do you do? <laughs> Yeah, so done GCSEs, A levels, um, university. I done LLB law. Um, I was very much set on being a solicitor. Went to all the top firms and stuff. Had an introduction to the banking world. I realised I had a lot of transferable skills, and it was a sort of a new challenge. Yeah. Um, so that's what I wanted to go into. So I, I went into that. Applied to the compliance graduate scheme. It was a two-year course. Done that. Now I'm an assistant vice president, so that's essentially a step up from a grad. Um, I work in compliance, so very similar to law. Instead of looking at um, law and legislation, you're looking at regulations. Um, And I'm in the compliance assurance team. So what we essentially do is we review different areas of the bank and we write reports on how the bank is managing its risk to customers. Um, And that can be risk presented by products, services or the actual you know staff that work at the bank um so you know the, the law might say black and white um you cannot do this um if you do this the consequence is this the exception to the rule is this whereas a regulation it can be quite um it can be quite blurred and so you need people to come in and interpret it and then review how well that's been interpreted and translating into the different uh policies and ways of ways of working at the bank yeah, and you said you mentor staff and graduates as well. Then what what do you do with that? Yeah, so me and my friends have had this conversation. We realised how beneficial the programs were for us, 
yeah. the social mobility programs. So now I'm coming to a place in my career, I'm still young, but I'm very conscious of the impact it can have on people coming from environments like myself. So anytime I'm in the bank and I see, um, you know, maybe an intern that's struggling at the lifts or, um, you know, a new graduate has joined this team and they send an email around saying, you know, I'll be putting time in your diary. I'll make the effort to have a one to ones with that person. If they want to continue the relationship further, then that's up to them. Um, but I'm always there to give a helping hand. And I've made it known in my um, in my team that I'd like to be sort of a main point of contact mm -hmm. for school leavers, uh, graduates, interns, etc., coming into the team. So I'll sort of take them under my shoulder, um, have cash ups with them throughout the week. I'll speak to people at different uh, teams in the bank, and you know, just sort of coach them along. Yeah, that that's really uh, impressive of you to give back. You know, that's something not everybody can do or would do. Uh, so that's really great to hear that. So, you know, if, we, if your friends are watching this one, they might want to look away to the answer to this one in case they start laughing. Yeah. But do you then see yourself as a role model? Do you consider yourself as that one? Whether you like it or not, do you think you are? I mean, that's a bit of a tough question. Yeah. But uh, uh, Kimani, the role model, yeah, no? <laughs> yeah. If I'm being completely honest, it's something I've actually thought of lately because uh, someone called me it. Um, I didn't actually think of myself as one before, but now I definitely say I am. Yeah. Um, I think I'm very much becoming the person I needed growing up mm -hmm. and I'm trying to be that person for people younger than me mm -hmm. and older. You know, younger people can sort of mentor older, vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd say I am, definitely. Yeah, that, that is really nice to hear. And, and so you should have the confidence to be able to say that. Um, do you ever think of yourself as you know, the kid from North London who's now doing this, you know, do you, do you think back to where you were and what you've accomplished and what you've achieved and sit back and go, hey, I'm doing all right with this? Yeah, it's funny you say this because I think, uh, how do I answer this? It's, it's doing, um, when you get into these corporations and stuff and you come from a certain environment, not the worst, but definitely not the best, you've almost got this sort of imposter syndrome at times so no matter how well you do you always think am I doing good enough or am I meant to be here um but if I go and look back through my school yearbook it actually says you know Kimani most likely to be successful and stuff like that so I've always had this sort of mindset and you know thinking about growing up whether it be with Paul or some of my other friends we would do stuff like um let's say we go out to eat we go out to eat in the city just because it's a different environment and I see myself doing stuff like that now, you know, I do martial arts and go to the gym. But for martial arts, I go to somewhere like Hackney or in the city just because I know I'd get opportunity to meet loads of different people that think like me. So I guess maybe it's a mindset thing. But, um, yeah, I've, I've always had that sort of, you know, yeah. something. I don't know what it is, but, yeah. yeah. You, you don't sound like uh, the shy person you alluded to a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. Don't, I don't think anybody's watching this going, yeah, he wasn't telling the truth there. So uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's that's interesting to hear. As, again, even in your personal life, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, because it's very easy to just go, well, I know this place, I know that place. So to push yourself out of your comfort zone, even in your personal world, is it, quite a challenge for a lot of people, especially the last couple of years considered. So that's really interesting to hear that you do that as well. I, I think as well, as we kind of roll towards the end of this few, a few more minutes left, um, from students I've spoke to, but banking has a, a kind of love-hate relationship, but it's either the most boring job in the world or it's mm. the most exciting job in the world. I think we know which side you fit on in terms of law and banking and things like that. I mean, it's your job, and I think as well from what I've spoke to, that it's people consider it to be the same thing day after day after day after day. We all have routines in our jobs. But is, is your job and is the banking world, from what you've seen, that Monday to Friday, the grind, the routine, the dull, or is it, um, you know, no two days are the same? Um, i say two things. So firstly, I'd say where you sit in the bank, it's very much, uh, it's about your skill set and your personality. So what I didn't realise before I got into the banking world is that there's a lot of different roles. So you could work in tech, for example, you could be an investment banker or trader, as everyone sort of knows as sort of the common routes into banking. You could work in the legal department, uh, HR, etc. There's loads of things to do. Um, corporate social responsibility. Those are teams that are growing. Um, there's a lot of roles in the bank. Um, it's very much about your skill set and personality. In terms of this sort of working day, I'd say 
I'd say, so in compliance, there's two sort of subsets of compliance, I say, in general terms. So there's advisory compliance, which is probably a bit more legalistic. So different teams in the bank, we call them the business, because different business teams in the bank, they would send an email or call compliance for an advisory opinion on how to interpret a piece of regulation for their day to day. Um, whereas what I do, I'd say it's less uh, ad hoc and a lot more structured. Um, so, you know, I've got a methodology I need to work to when I'm doing a review of a different area. At the end of the review, I'd write a report. Um, so if you think about doing a science test at school, um, so I'd start with the scoping stage. So what am I going to um, review for, for this as part of the annual plan? Um, what, where does the risk lie? Um, planning, so how am I going to plan my time throughout this review? Um, who are some of the stakeholders I need to talk to? What are some of the things I need to look at? What bits of evidence do I need to evidence whether things are working or if there's an issue? Uh, go into the testing phase, phase which is called field work, field work um, which is when I'm actually doing you know, the testing and then writing a report. And then at the end of that process, it will be a big um, sort of conversation with the business as to, you know, this is what's working well. Here's where the enhancement needs to be made. Based on that, I think an issue should be raised, yes or no. And then if there's an issue, there's a separate, you know, big process. Um, so yeah, I'd say if you're a fan of the advisory ad hoc stuff, there's definitely things in the bank you can do. If you like a more structured um, way of working, so if you wanna to come to work and know what I have to do on Monday, um, what time I'm gonna sort of log off roughly and stuff like that, then there's teams for that as well. So you really can find your place then, can't you? And it sounds like you, you truly are or truly have, maybe already. Yeah. Uh, so what's next obviously you've had quite a journey to get to where you are here what's next do you have five-year ten-year plans i mean you don't have to say it if you don't want i don't want to get you in trouble with your organization or anybody in particular but you know what's next for kimani yeah so two things so i think work-wise i think um so in terms of the business i support for compliance it's the barclays payments business which is also known as barclay cards in the public um, so you know what Barclay Card is. And um, so that's every, anything to do with uh, making payments, whether that be in-store, online, uh, cards, wearable technology. Um, so I'm very much interested in that side of the bank as opposed to, yes, say, the private bank or the corporate bank. Mm -hmm. So I want to learn more about the payments business and do a lot more work in that space. I think it's also on the come up, especially with things like fintech, um, digital assets like crypto, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, Outside of work, very much, you know, working on work-life balance. I think it's something you always have to keep control of and manage. Um, so like I said earlier, things I do, I go to the gym, um, martial arts. Um, yeah, just very much, you know, doing those stuff, traveling. That's something I want to do a lot more of. Yeah. There was a key phrase you said there. I don't know if you realize that you said, I want to learn more about. And that really resonated for me as, as a former teacher yeah. and somebody who works in education because I know a lot of teachers can – me included i've been there and done it bang on about lifelong learning but you never stop learning and all these kind of things so what's your approach to learning as we roll up towards like the last question or two what what's your approach to personal development work-wise personal wise and learning never stops yeah so i've always been someone that's very big on personal development and i come from a family where you know i'm one of the youngest so maybe that's helped to mold my mindset um but you would often hear a lot of uh let's say criticism about uh, sort of some the teaching industry sometimes because people will say things like, for example, um, I'm doing algebra in school, but I'm not going to use it in the real world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not the point. It's a way of thinking. And I think, you know, maths doesn't have to be your best subject, for example, but there's other subjects from school, such as like uh, English literature or psychology, which I very much uh, use in my day to day now. Mm -hmm. um, and my big interest sort of things I like to research are psychology. So um, I'll go to talks and events, I'll watch interviews um, outside of work. And then that's all to do with, that's all alongside, sorry, um, things like gym and fitness. Yeah. So it helps to just make you an all-rounded person. Yeah, and you never quite know what you're going to learn next and how that's going to fit in. Is, is what I'm learning now going to fit into my personal life, my work life? How's it going to affect me? So it's great to hear that you do that as well. So let's give you one last question here then, Kimani, which I haven't prepped you for, but uh, if you watch Paul's interview, you'll know what it is. So um, if you could go back to, say, 16, 17-year-old Kimani, 
give him one bit of advice that you wish that he had taken on or listened to as a bit of a mantra? Is there anything that you would uh, advise him to do? Yeah. Um, if I knew this, I'd have a, a, a cool sort of phrase or something. <laughs> you haven't I'd got say, a catchphrase or a slogan yeah. or anything then? Nothing T-shirt worthy yet? Or, uh, yeah, nothing I can think of now. But one thing I would say is um, two things, actually. So firstly, is to be patient. Um, I think going back, I was I had a lot of stress and stuff. Um, a lot of it was self-imposed. Um, I think I'd be patient because more often than not, things have worked out in the end. If I look back at my life, you know, certain things I used to stress about. Now, it's whether that be work-wise and personal life, it's it's not really a stress now. And you, you develop mechanisms and uh, behaviours to deal with that easier. Second thing I'd say is something I'm doing now is just putting yourself out there a lot more. Um, take risks, especially when you're younger. Um, nothing, you know, that's going to hurt yourself, uh, <laughs> you know, cause personal injury. But um, definitely take risks, put yourself out there um, and enjoy it. Be patient. That is some nice advice. I think I might take on a bit of that as well, if that's all right. So uh, am I, you know, 42, I'm still learning myself. So uh, I'm going to take a little bit of that as well. But uh, Kimani, thank you so much for, for sharing all your ideas and your expertise and what journey you've been on. And uh, who knows what's next for you? I was great that you've got your plan set in front of you and, and who knows who you'll meet to... Uh, to kind of go with you on that journey professionally and personally as well so thank you so much really do appreciate it and uh stay on the line after this uh, we'll have a quick catch up but uh, for now i'll just say thank you for talking business and uh, see you again cheerio perfect thanks a lot danny Thank you very much, Kimani. It's great to see the passion that you have for your work and that you're able to give back as well to other people within the organisation and further afield. So thank you for doing what you do and thank you for talking business. Really do appreciate it. And to everybody else watching and listening, thank you for liking, sharing, rating, reviewing, subscribing and doing all those good things. I really appreciate it because it helps other people to take advantage of these insights from people like Kimani as well. Please do say hi on all the social media channels. Tell everybody you know about it if you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you again next time on Talking Business with me, Danny Pardo. Thank you very much. Cheerio.